You're welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. Now, Joy News is learning that the director of the Advanced Body Sculpt Center, the Obinfo Hospital, was sent to court a while ago. Details are sketchy, but we're with the Dofsu, which is treating the matter as a homicide. For those very fine details, we've also been engaging a mother of the deceased uh, deputy CEO, uh, Stacy Oferdako, who says that her daughter's death should be the last of Obinfo Hospital. Uh, Stacy died there when he went there, when she apparently went there for some treatment. Uh, Hannah Odame has been speaking with her. This is the hospital, the Obinfo Hospital here at Wager Junction. This is where 37 year old Stacy took her last breath. She's not the first. Joy News' investigation also revealed some time back some of the casualties that take place here. In 2016, we are told by the Medical and Dental Council that Dr. Obenfo had to renew his license before he could operate. That has not been done, but the hospital was operational. And that's how comes Stacy got in here and took her last breath. We are also told by the Medical and Dental Council that this is the third time that this hospital is being closed. As you can see, a lot of people coming here for advanced body sculpting. You can see the before and after pictures. Yet, we are told Dr. Obeng does not have the license to operate. Why then do these people come here? Unfortunately, Stacy was a victim. For now, Dr. Obeng is in police custody. Investigations are ongoing to ascertain the cause of death of Stacy, just one of the casualties in this facility. Even though we are told that he's in police custody and the hospital has been closed, I will attempt to find out if indeed there's no one here. So this is the entrance and it's it's closed, it's closed. I see no one in here. It's closed um, and I see absolutely no one here except a few cars that are parked here. I don't see anyone around, not even a caretaker. And the hospital seems to be under construction. In fact, I see up there um, a warning by the Gun West District Assembly to stop work. And this was uh, written here in, on the 8th of September 2010. But the hospital is still being constructed. And that's what I see here. There's no one here. And the administrator, the owner of this hospital, Dr. Obing, is in police custody at the Nima Police Headquarters, assisting investigations to the cause of death of Stacy. Stay tuned to join News as we bring you up to the minute information on all that we get on this ongoing investigations. For join News, my name is Hannah Odame. Hannah Odami there who went to the facility to check whether or not it's still functioning. We'll bring you that interview with um, Stacey's mother shortly. But let me speak quickly to Dr. Eli Kwesi Apiku, who is the president of the Medical and Dental Council. Sir, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. You have known... You have known over the years that uh, this, indeed, in 2013, here on Joinies, we did a couple of stories about this uh, hospital. A lot of people are wondering, how is it that there is some sort of organization like yours, but you still have an, uh, a hospital, so to speak, uh, like the Obinfo Hospital operating after all the stories that were done about, about the dangers of the work there? Yeah, you know, uh, the Medical and Dental Council is a state agency that doesn't work in isolation. Uh, there are rules and regulations that uh, govern the operations of the Medical and Dental Council. Now, you will recall, as uh, you had indicated, that uh, we have had issues since 2013. But again, with respect to an attempt to close down the institution, I think, that started some two years ago, where we were there on two occasions, and then the institution was closed down. In the first instance, 
uh, the doctor went to court seeking uh, an injunction and restraining the Medical and Dental Council from uh, continually interfering with uh, whatever he was doing. And then on the day that uh, the case was to be heard, he wasn't available, and therefore the case was thrown out. Again, under whatever circumstances... So, so hold on, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. You say that he was not available, which means that he they did really not show did up. He really did not attend court. And, the, and, 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 and that the case court. was thrown out because the he did not show was, up? Well, I think that he went there to keep... Uh, uh, try to restrain the medical and dental council. Okay. Yeah, and then since he, uh, the complainant, was really not available, mm. yeah, the case was thrown was out. out. Okay. That was at the first instance. Mm. Yeah. So again, say whatever mandate that he had, the place was opened, was reopened. Did you follow then, up to find out exactly why is it that in a country where there is order that yes. when you are an authority, I mean, your, 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 um, the medical, dental and medical council, which is a respected authority, has yes. been involved and, and yes. given proof that this hospital should not be operating. Did you bother to find out uh, why it was still operating after you had stepped in? Yes, we did. And I indicated uh, previously that we really had engaged the appropriate state agencies, the Ghana Police Service, uh, who we really closed the place down with their assistance. Mm. And then the case really now has to be investigated. And then the case uh, presented to the Attorney General uh, Department for prosecution. So the Medical and Dental Council has done its part has uh, forwarded whatever information that was required to be forwarded to the appropriate agencies, the Ghana Police Service, for them to go in and uh, have the individual prosecuted. Sir, so if so, I understand you very clearly, and I just yes. want to be sure that we're on the same page here, you did your yes. job, uh, a part of, or you, you did your part, as you say. The rest that was... Is what, that and, is what I'm saying. And, the, and then the police locked up the place. But... The next thing you knew, the, the, the hospital was opened and it was still functioning. Is that correct? Exactly. So the, other, the, the best thing we should do as a regulator was for us to ensure that at least we have handed over the case to an appropriate uh, state agency. But uh, you, saw, a, you saw that, yes, you saw that even after what you did and after you mm -hmm. left it to the appropriate authority, as you say, that they were still operating. Were you aware of that? We were aware, and we continued to pursue the case. And as I, as I indicated earlier, the case was referred to the Attorney General Department for um, that individual to be prosecuted. And the Medical and Dental Council does not prosecute. The Medical and Dental Council will only come in as a witness in this case. Okay. I think basically that is what happened. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, as to whoever gave him the mandate, to reopen that particular institution, we were expecting that we would hear whoever gave him the mandate. We will get all that information from court. Okay, I, yeah. I, I as a Ghanaian, as a mm -hmm. uh, as a woman who are, who is looking at all these flashy pictures of people who have gone and seen the sorts of results that they want, and not knowing what medical implications I'm exposing myself to. I am more likely to open their doors. And I'm relying on a group, uh, a, a very authoritative group like the Medical and Dental Council to help me out here. Would you say, sir, then, that you have failed the people of Ghana who relied on you trusting that uh, you would well, help, you would help uh, uh, them not to be exposed to some of these uh, medical complications from which well, a, C, a deputy CEO of the NEIP has died? Well, I wouldn't say that the Medical and Dental Council has failed the Ghanaian. Uh, the issue is that we had also made some publications. We had appeared on networks like yours to really caution the Ghanaian that, uh, in the first place, the practitioner who is holding himself up and doing those... Uh, sorry, the practitioner who is holding himself up Hello? Yes, sir. Please go on. Yeah. The, the practitioner who is holding himself up and then doing those surgical procedures 
Um, yes, I, he I hear you, sir. Please go ahead. No, there, there, there is a feedback, and I'm, uh, I'm having a challenge. Okay. Well, hold on for me. Let's see if we can work this out. In the meantime, let me just announce that we have uh, Matilda Womaga on the line who has been with the DOF, so they are treating this matter as a homicide. We understand that uh, Mr. Obenfo has been processed for court earlier today. We'll get those details uh, from Matilda. Uh, Doc, is it better now? Can you hear me so you can finish yes, with the is, point yeah, you're making? Is, is Please better. go ahead. Yeah, I, I, yeah, like I indicated earlier, I really cannot say that the Medical and Dental Council had failed the Ghanaian. At the time that we were having challenges, we came out specifically to caution the Ghanaian mm. that anybody who goes to that institution to seek medical care does so at his or her own peril. We had mm. had several um, news conferences or um, press conferences. We have had discussions on a number of uh, uh, radio stations and uh, media houses, uh, really educating the Ghanaian. And I'm sure that I have been okay. to your institution not more than once. Oh, sorry, more than once or more than twice, if you okay. could recall. Okay, so, so hold on for me. Uh, we're, we're, yeah. we're picking information that he was sent to, uh, he was sent to court earlier today, and we're getting the details from my colleague, Matilda Umega, who uh, is currently at the Magistrate Court uh, here in Accra. I'll come back to you, sir, to find out from you who you think has failed uh, the people of Ghana, and especially failed uh, this deputy CEO, for example, as we know that she died there. But hang on for me. Matilda, if you can hear me, what's the detail? Uh, so, it's, uh, the, I'm currently at the Magistrate Court 8, where the hearing is ongoing at the moment. Um, currently, I'm trying to get some information because I came in a bit late and I mm. can't get access into it. But the little details I managed to get from the CID homicide unit is that uh, Dr. Obain Andor was picked up Thursday following their family's complaint to the police. He was picked up and he was uh, kept in police custody. On Friday, he fell ill, so he's been on admission at the police hospital since Friday until he was discharged today, this morning, in fact. So he has been brought to the magistrate court. The police tell me they are yet to interrogate him because throughout the period he was with them, he was not well, so he was on admission. So he's at the moment here at the court. So I'm just waiting outside uh, mm -hmm. to get some more information as to how the case pan out today. So okay. uh, you see, at the moment, I'm at the street court eight, waiting to get the outcome of today's mm -hmm. court proceeding. Matilda, thank you very much for those updates. We'll come to you as and when you have any more. Uh, uh, doctor, if you can hear me, uh, this is the very latest information. Uh, we understand that he is in court at the moment. The hearing is ongoing. You say that the medical council has not failed uh, Ghanaians because you have told people that if you go there, you're doing so at your own risk. Not everybody will hear that information. And then again, still operating means for a lot of Ghanaians that they have uh, they, 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 they are qualified to operate, that they are qualified for you to put your, place your health in their hands. What is happening now, I believe, should have happened uh, some time or some years back, and probably this deputy CEO will still be alive. Who, in your estimation, is to blame in this matter? Who allowed him? Had, I, I'm sure you have some information on this. No, uh, if you are indicating or you are asking a question as to who allowed him, yeah, to continue right. to continue, to continue uh, operating practicing. after you helped the police to, you know, close it down. Of course, yes. shielding, right. Yeah. You see, what I'm saying is that that is what is unclear to us. That is why we went to court. That is why the case has been reported and mm. that is being pursued in the court. Because the Medical and Dental Council cannot go ask that individual as to who had authorized you to really reopen the institution mm. or to reopen that particular facility. The only way to go by it is for the Medical and Dental Council to go to court and really get the hearing and know exactly who gave him the authority to reopen the facility when the facility was closed. Mm. Did you find out from the police personnel you worked with to close down the place? Uh, you see, 
Uh, it is a very long story, and uh, I wish to indicate that. You see, the council is coming out with a complete write-up as to what has happened over the period for mm -hmm. all Ghanaians to know exactly uh, 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 the fact. So, you see, we are. Um, it appears that the interview tends to be picking on specific issues. But I think that if you give us a little bit of time, we are able to come out with a complete write-up as to okay. what the council does, what the council has done, okay. and what the council was doing before this unfortunate incident came up again. Okay. Does the Medical and Dental Council... Uh, have details or do you, are you aware by any chance if there are any other similar facilities operating around here in this country? Uh, <laughs> I'm unable to really provide that answer. Okay. Wherever we went and there are people that are operating without the registration, we organize for the facility to be closed down. Okay. And we do follow up in some instances. And when we realize that the facility has been reopened, we again get the facility uh, closed down. Dr. Ali, before I let you go, finally, before I, I, I let you go, and I really don't want to dwell on rumors, but then there are also uh, rumors, and some of uh, 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 reporters who have gone down uh, on this story have, have said, I mean, they've had information, off-record information sometimes that indicated that uh, it appears that Mr. O, well, Mr. Obenfo had some had access to uh, the corridors of power, and that may have helped him continue operating even after you made it clear that his work was dangerous. Well, uh, we haven't really established that fact, and therefore I wouldn't want to speculate or to comment on that particular fact. I'm not aware uh, of, of that fact. Okay. Sir, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. In the meantime, he's in court. Does that give you any uh, uh, better feeling? If I may ask. Hello, Pardon? sir. Hello? In the meantime, yeah, I was asking for your reaction to the fact that he's in court as we speak. Well, <laughs> um, well, the legal system is working, and therefore we see how the events unfold. Mm. Thank you yep. very much. Uh, uh, he's the president of the Medical and Dental Council, Dr. Eli Atipui is his name. Yeah, let's listen to Stacy's mother, Stacy Dako's mother, who's been speaking to my colleague Hannah Odami. He, she's also been speaking to her brother as well. I didn't want to me baby so bad. Me baby dear, why ya dear say in so mu high mu what me you know. Me dana says why ya dear say what me ni. I was happy my daughter has been able to pursue her education this far. I traveled and came back to meet a makeover in my home. We had planned to meet after her exams, and she said she's not well. So I advised her to treat herself before she travels to the USA for further education. And not sure, say, I say, malaria be when treating the ENT who send the Honam Yania. Now, me catch and say what bread because or call Eastern or call US or call German on any panel or buy and not send the Honam a yen a ye wet than in yet in tea or by Arika cra and Timmy catch and say, Oh, more modding now on treaty malaria no in free ho because or be too quiet or UK or say I call any cause to be ho now or call Uncle Hano now say, Mamma Tinty or be fair fair mono. No, I say, I'll your friend back. Uh -huh. See, Sunday, no maintaining car. I didn't know uh, Saturday, no maintaining car. Friday, me in a casa. Sunday, me in a casa, no maintaining can be. See, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And you remember at 10 o'clock, I may call down. Me, you will see me precope. I'm saying, ah, me in this day, sinka. I'm sending the message in so I'm sharing, you know. Where do you call you? I'm about to see my friend and I'm doing my tea. My friend. Phone no penna or be pecky. Till be fine, I mean, Miss On, one team may say, I call my friend, I call Sia, or I call Sia, my friend, I call. I call my mammy, she shame me to do because three days he pay our own friend me. I say, May me want dream me to do now. My send you message in so Sunday, no one fat. Till me, yam, she shame you, nine hour war. Nipponage now, so dear, or say, she agreed, and that was the last conversation. 
After three days, I had not heard from her, so I became worried and called her phone, which was picked by someone who identified herself as a nurse at the Obenfo Hospital. She told me my daughter is sick, so I should come over. I quickly went and got there by midnight. For 30 minutes, I had not been allowed to see my daughter. I became furious, and my complaints got to the doctor, Obenfo, who eventually attended to me. Okay. Until the membrana may measure and did the money at dinner. I said, Busy and Nibia Nino Hontino. A hen, Bissa say, No, what did he or say, I am money coco cacra and opano di coco cacranti. Oh, to me, Bassi, see, Uncle, you need better home, Natchez say. And you know, to me, man, so dear, and opano aba. Timmy driver you on Tiha. Now, me, Nina, could be a bed through three o'clock, and take me friend and a journal. Will be through her bay. That is Stacey's mother um, narrating the incidents from her po uh, point of view. Her brother has also, also been speaking to Hano Dame. I, um, there is a guy here with me and he called me that my mom wants to talk to me. And I was like, Mami, ah, what is it? What is it? It's, it's very late. And I didn't even receive the call then. I, I went back to sleep. So. Ah, I woke up and I saw the guy just standing right in front of me, shivering. And I was like, ah, what is wrong? The guy just gave me the bad news and I was like, no, um, it's a dream. I'm dreaming. It's, it's, it's not real, no. Because um, I remember the last time I went there, um, we were sitting and I was like, ah, do you remember Ebony when, when she was in the freezer? Like, do, do, you, do you recall that? So, uh, one day are we going to be like that? Yes, I don't know. Uh, it just occurred to me. Like, are we? Are we? Are we going to experience that one day? And she was like, "Hmm, Eric." And she asked, "If I die, will you cry?" She did ask you that. <laughs> it's, it's a cliche. Um, yeah. yeah. She asked me uh, if she dies, am I, am I going to cry? I said, "Shut up! I'm going to slap the, the hell out of her." I remember that. And I was like, oh, we need to be careful because the rate at which the youth are dying of late, we have to be exempted. Um, it's, it's quite unfortunate. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't know. When I heard the news, I was like, it's not true. It's not true. You know that you get the full interviews here on the Joy News channel. Eric Ofedako, his brother, or Stacey Ofedako, who is uh, dead now.